Hi, in this video I'm going to talk about the construct mesh node which, well, lets you construct meshes. Now I'm not going to do anything fancy here, but I thought maybe while we're waiting, counting the days until we uh, get something more high level, why not have a look at this one? And um, yeah, this is going to be a little bit involved, but it's not too bad. And so in the first part of the video, I'm just going to manually create a very simple mesh, basically just a plane with uh, three polygons based on these points here. And then the second part, I want to try and create something similar, but along a strand. And I also want to be able to change the poly count based on the point count of the strand. So maybe I'll just show you quickly how I created these points, but it's nothing spectacular. I'm just using a for each loop and create these points here. And then I am offsetting them along the negative Z and I get this row here. So this gives me these points with these indices and these indices are going to be very important. And I'm using Roland Dreyer's great print points uh, compound. Okay, so as we can see here, we need three arrays. And well, we've already got the point positions, so we can just plug that in. And now we need to worry about the face offset and the face vertex. So let's start with the face vertex. <clears throat> so what, what we want to do here is we want to define the vertex indices in a specific order. And to be more precise, what we want to do is if we're considering this side, the front of our polygons, then we have to go in a counterclockwise order, which I believe is called the winding order. And I'm not entirely sure, but I think this is because of the handedness of the coordinate system. But yeah, the front facing polygon, we have to uh, go counterclockwise. So since we have uh, three polygons, we're just going to use those indices to define them. And uh, I'm going to go and start at this vertex here, but it doesn't really matter. So if we go 0, 1, 5, 4, we have the indices of our first quad. So I'm going to write this down here, 0, 1, 5, 4. And then I'm just going to do the same thing for the next uh, quad or polygon. So one, two, six, <laughs> five. Hopefully this is readable. And then finally, two, three, seven, six. And this right here is our face vertex array. Now we're telling the compound the indices and the order, but it doesn't really know yet where does one polygon start and where does it end or where does the next one start. So we need another array and this is going to be this one. And if you work with strands before, this is going to be very similar. So this is going to look like this in this case. Zero, four, eight, twelve. So what this means is, so we have three polygons we want to create, or uh, three quads. And so we're always going to have to have one, well, the number of polygons plus one is going to be the size of our face vertex array, uh, face offset array. And basically, since we have quads, we're just incrementing by four for every element. And what we're saying is basically the first one is going to be from here to here. So from index zero to three, then it's gonna be from index four to seven, <clears throat> and then it's gonna be from index eight to 11. 
And that's what that means. So now I'm just going to use string to array. And by the way, these are unsigned int array. So I have to also use one of these because this is long. And I can basically just type the values in here. So what's this? Zero, one, five, four, one, two, six, five, two, three, seven, six. And then I'm gonna copy it and use it here. And this one is going to be 0, 4, 8, 12. And hopefully, if I didn't make any mistakes, if I plug this in, this will indeed give me, let me delete this, give me a mesh like that. So hopefully that makes sense to you. And we can see here, if we look at uh, the bottom, that this is black, so this is indeed the front, but we could turn on two-sided lighting and it would shade it. <clears throat> so I'm gonna hide this now and look at a different example. So what I've got here is a Maya curve which is not evenly spaced in terms of its points. And I'm just bringing it into Bifrost, bringing it in, and I'm gonna make sure it's evenly spaced, and then I'm resampling it so that when I change it, um, you know, these points here that I'm also creating will update. I can basically change the resolution And I think I've shown this in another video, how I created these points with the uh, double helix kind of strand. But basically, I'm using the binormal, which I'm creating here with this node, and just offset these points along the binormal, which is, by the way, this vector here. And then I'm creating these points, which is, in terms of the layout, it's very similar to the previous example, right? I'm starting at zero here, and I'm going uh, all the way to the right, and then I'm starting here and going all the way to the right with the indices. So, now I want to construct a mesh, but I don't want to do it manually, because, like I said, I want to be able to change the point count here of the strand, and I want it to update and work no matter what. So I can't just manually type it in, otherwise I have to manually change it every time. So make a bunch of polygons like this. And um, let's see, this is all just visualization. So I'm gonna create another construct mesh node. And I've got the point positions here, so this is good. Now, let's do the face offset first. And maybe make this a little lower res. One, two, three, four, five. So I want to create five polygons, and I have one, two, three, four, five, six points. So I can just use the point count for the size of my face offset array, if that makes sense. So since I'm creating quads, I can just use a sequence array, get the point count here, use that as my size, if I can connect it, <laughs> and change this to an unsigned int. Put, uh, and put four here as a step size. 
and then I'm going to connect it here. And now this is going to be the more tricky part. And I would say that the more complex the mesh you want to create, the more tricky is become to uh, uh, more tricky it is to come up with a recipe to create this array procedurally. But for this one, I don't think is that hard. So let's have a look at this. We just have to come up with a we have to find a pattern that we can apply procedurally. So if I just write down uh, the array again, one, zero, one, seven, six, and then it would be one, two, eight, seven, maybe one more, two, uh, three, nine, eight. So for every polygon or every quad, I want to create procedurally one of these uh, four indices and then I combine it all in one array. So why don't we use a for each loop? So I can see here that this is just counting up from zero. So that could be the current index. So I guess we could say that our first element for each polygon is going to have to be the current ID. And then here it looks like the second one is just the current ID plus one. And then there's quite a jump, right? So how can I express this in terms of the ID and something else? I just want to use the ID and then it seems like it's just adding seven. However, this is going to change based on the number of points that I have. So, um, what we could say is, so we have how many polygons? One, two, three, four, five. If I go ID plus poly count or number and then that gets me to in this case five zero plus five is five and then i have to add two this should work independent of the resolution of the curve well we can try and see if it works and then lastly, this fourth element here is just one minus the previous uh, one. So I could just say previous minus one. And this here is sort of the recipe that I came up with. And now I want to try if this actually works. So I'm going to create a for each loop. And uh, by the way, the poly count is going to be this point count minus one. And can use this as my max iterations because I want to run over this as many times as I have polygons, right? So I come in here and here I want to build an array of four values, four indices. First one is just going to be the current index, as I've stated here. Then I'm going to increment the current index by one. Add this. Then I'm going to take the current ID. I'm going to add to it the poly count, which is this guy here. And then I want to add two, which is this value here. And that I can plug in here. And finally, I just want to decrement this value and plug it in here. And then put that into the output. And that should hopefully do it. But note that we have an array of an array here, and it's also a long data type. So I'm going to flatten nested array. I'm going to 
use unsigned int and this is the big moment let's see if it actually works so far it looks good uh, maybe just hide the grid and let's see if I can change the resolution yeah it seems to work and uh, I can also I didn't show this earlier but you know I can use the scale value here to change the width so I don't know maybe you can create roads like this we should also be able to adjust our curve and this will update so that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about here so it's a simple example and like I said I think the more complex the shape you want to create the more complicated uh, the uh, creating the this array might become and also I'm not saying that this is the best or most efficient way it's just something that I came up with and finally I think we can use update mesh uh, normals on here to create normals because if we look here we don't have normals yet so we could do this and we might just see if it works by creating some strands along the normals and see if that does the right thing and it looks like it does so maybe you could uh, create a road with some lanterns or whatnot and uh, yeah, thanks for watching.